What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this episode of how to set up a home lab. If you're new here and you want to just install Zabbix, you can. You do not need to follow this series, but this is a part of a series where we are teaching people how to build a home lab so you have a basic setup to then progress your skills with other technologies. I just wanted an all-inclusive class that allowed people to get started and not feel overwhelmed just from A to B. So we are going to be installing Zabbix, the server hosting side in this video and the next video i will show you how to set up the agent on the end devices is zabbix well zabbix is an open source monitoring tool that uh, monitors ipt it infrastructure network servers, virtual machines, cloud services, application databases, and websites. So really, you can put this on your endpoints if you want to, but that's not really the point of this. Uh, to get you guys hands-on skills and experience, this is used in the real world to monitor all your infrastructure that you're serving to your clients, right? Your websites, your video game servers, you know, all that architecture. Uh, some benefits of Zabbix, Zabbix is it is open source. It has unlimited scalability, distributed monitoring. I like that it already has, uh, you know, end to end encryption and it's super secure right from the beginning. And then you can have high availability with it. It lo offers lots of uh, technologies. Now, if you're watching this in 2025 and you have attempted to install Zabbix, we all know it's a pain because they actually have some typos like right here and they don't explain how to set up an sql database before you start to install zabbix so i'm here in 2025 to show you how to do this so in the case of our course we are going to create a virtual machine within our proxmox environment like we've done with all of our other stuff here's a quick overview two gigs of ram two cores 20 gigs of storage Go ahead and set this up real quick and unpause the video once you've created your Zabbix specific virtual machine in your Proxmox environment. Okay, so now that I'm logged into this virtual machine, I can see the IP address is 234. So I'm gonna SSH into this like I've shown in all previous videos. SSH username learn at the IP address of your server. So 192.168. Dot fifty dot two thirty six, I believe. What did I just say? Two thirty four. Two thirty four. Click connect. Do we want to fingerprint? Yes, we have to. And now we're logged in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to make this big. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get. Uh, well, we're going to make ourselves a super user just by default, so we don't have to keep typing in sudo. So it's sudo dash s and then the password for your account and now you can see we went green to white and instead of showing learn we show root you need root privileges to install this instead of typing sudo a whole bunch of times this is just the easier way to do it and then we need to request the repo once again all this stuff will be on our website and so we just do this wget command and to get the latest version once again our commands will be here so will um, Zabbix website, I would go there and look for the latest updates, okay, to make sure you get the latest commands. The thing you're going to want to really follow and pay attention to in this video is how to set up the database, right? And so we're going to do wget, it has downloaded the stuff. We need to unpackage this information from what we just downloaded. All right, that's been unpackaged, and then we're going to do apt update to make sure we get all the latest Zabbix repos right now that this has been unpackaged and now that that is done Zabbix gives us an install script for all the back end stuff that we need to run this and so we're going to do yes and we're going to download all of this stuff real quick and then we're going to move on to installing the SQL server now that we have all the Zabbix packages on our virtual machine. Another thing I wanted to mention, compare my commands 
to their website and you will see that I do follow a flow. So I just did the wget, I just did the D package, I just did the update, I just did the sudo. So I, I followed everything that they did, including up to step C app install, where my steps are going to start to change is right here. I'm going to inject how to set up the database because they don't show you. They just say, make sure you have a database. So right here, I inject how to set up a, a database in my course. And then I continue with these steps. And then I, instead of using this command, I'm just going to use MySQL and then type in the rest of these commands because they have a typo. So now that that's done, we are going to move on to this command and I do have sudo on these by default because I uh, copied and pasted but sudo, sudo app install mysql server we're going to install it and then we're going to start it or we're going to the next command we're going to do actually will make it so it'll start on boot when you uh, restart your virtual machine so that's another thing like system ctl get familiar with what system ctl is and how to use it because pretty much everything that you download will have system ctl options to be controlled within linux restart reboot check the status of a process uh, make sure that status persists during a restart etc so yep pseudo system start mysql that'll just start it on boot and then service mysql start we actually are starting the sql server and now this is where we differ right mysql where on here they want you to do this weird crap and you don't need to do that and it's a typo right there anyways they should have had a space so we can see that our command changed from root zabbix to mysql so you know you're in your mysql instance okay and so now we're going to create our database. So I'm going to grab this command, create the database Zabbix character set. So this is a character set um, that forces the input and the indexing of options into your Zabbix SQL database into numbers, letters, and capital specific. So remember that. That's very important. This will be case sensitive. We get an OK. And then I'm going to create the user Zabbix on this local host identified by the password. This is where you will insert a password and change your password. Okay. For the purpose of this course, I'm going to leave it as password. Um, but that is where you would set the password for this user and then grant all privileges on Zabbix. So Zabbix dot anything to the user local host and we get an okay Corey right there. So we created the user and then we just granted all privileges. And now I need to set global bin trust function to creators one. This is just temporary while we get everything set up. And then I'm going to do this quit command with the colon to leave the SQL database because we need to do a couple other things. So right here, we're gonna input, whoops, it didn't copy we are going to zcat into this Zabbix SQL script and essentially take all these default character sets and everything that we did uh, with our users and um, in our what we're going to do is attach this to the SQL database. So it's asking for a password. This is actually going to be the user Zabbix password right here, not your uh, root account password if I recall correctly. At this part, when it says Zcat and you enter your password, it's going to sit blank for a minute, a couple minutes maybe even. Don't touch anything, don't do anything. This is setting up and running your scripts, okay? And then eventually, come back to this video, unpause it, once your uh, user has returned, then you know it's been set up. Okay, so we see the user has now been returned, like I was saying, that took maybe a minute, and now that we're done with that, we need to go back into my SQL, go in, take turn off that set global log bin trust function to zero, which means off, because we are done with it. And then we're going to quit. And now we need to configure our server. So we're going to go in here and go to nano, etc, Zabbix, Zabbix server configuration. 
And in here, we're going to just do our down arrow until we find our user. So here is our database name, Zabbix, database user, Zabbix. And then we need a database password. There is not a password right here. So we're going to backspace this twice. And you're going to put in that password that I mentioned that you need to change. In our case, we left it the same. So it is going to be password okay and then click Control x the letter y on your keyboard and enter to save this configuration file and then right here i'm going to do system ctl restart the zabbix server and the agent and the apache website and then real quick i'm going to do system ctl enable zabbix server zabbix agent and apache 2 and it's creating and executing all of those so they will persist and they will run so to run or to go to Zabbix's website, you need to um, do this format. When we go to the website, now that the instance is set up, it needs to be HTTP forward forward slash this forward slash, you know, the IP address of your server forward slash Zabbix. That's very important. It won't resolve unless you put Zabbix right uh, at the end. And then we are presented with our setup screen. <clears throat> and so we're going to do next steps. Make sure we have OKs on all the instances and the prerequisitions or the packages, right, that we need for this to run properly. In our case, it does run. Uh, yep, our MySQL database is already configured. It's local host. Uh, Zabbix is the user. In here, you can type that password that you created. And we click next steps and then that's just google being google uh, name your zabbix server lth zabbix and then you can set your time zone to wherever you are at so it looks like these are alphabetical kind of there we go okay and so then set the time zone of your server Okay, make sure all these have been filled, especially that database password. So you can log in, click next steps, and congratulations, you've installed it. Now here, remember, like I said, it's case sensitive for that database. So the username is admin with a capital A, and then Zabbix with no capitals is the default password. And you're in. That is how you set up the Zabbix server. Okay, so we're going to go over this more and this user interface in the next video after we set up an agent on another virtual machine. Thank you for watching. My name is Abe. This is LTH and your home lab series. Logging off.